Suffice to say, our politicians are too old. But don't count on any of our geriatric leaders to step aside anytime soon. President Biden wants to be in office until he's 86, despite a bombshell book claiming Joe privately admits to aides that he is tired and keeps his schedule clear before 10 a.m. We learned that 90-year-old Senator Dianne Feinstein has reportedly given power of attorney to her daughter after a series of hospitalizations. And this week, Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell appears to freeze for an extended period of time. But the Capitol physician medically cleared him to go back to work. The GOP candidate, Nikki Haley, thinks it's time for a change. We need to start getting new faces, new voices, younger generations involved in our government. And we need to have everybody else understand when it's time to go. It's sad. No one should feel good about seeing that. You know, with any more than we should feel good about seeing Dianne Feinstein, any more than we should feel good about a lot of what's happening or seeing Joe Biden's decline. What I will say is right now the Senate is the most privileged nursing home in the country. I mean, you know, Mitch McConnell has done some great things and he deserves credit, but you have to know when to leave. So, um, you know, obviously uh, Nikki Haley is right about this. Uh, we do seem to have a bit of a problem uh, and uh, with our, our, the age of our leaders. Um, but I don't know that I agree with her entirely on her solutions. But, uh, Judge, you know, we saw a couple of times in the last couple of weeks where Mitch has to be uh, unplugged and replugged back in. Mm -hmm. What do you make of this? Well, first of all, I find it stunning that uh, the whole time Donald Trump was president, and people were yelling, the 25th Amendment, let's get him out, the 25th Amendment. Yeah, Joe Biden, whose cognitive decline is so apparent to all of us, the limited hours, the way he even got into office. But I'll tell you, one of the things that I, that I take from this is that these people, there are two things. There's a difference between age and competence. Yeah. Who, whoever was sitting here, um, oh, it was Piers, talking about the fact that Mick Jagger is 80 and can get on a stage dance for two <laughs> hours and do it again the next night and be sharp as a tack. Okay, so it's not about age alone, and there is some benefit to institutional knowledge. There is some benefit to wisdom. Let's not just throw that off the table. But one of the things that I found was so important, that when you have positions of power, whether it be, you know, for me, I was a district attorney, okay? You're in charge of the grand jury. Who gets indicted? When you're a judge, you decide whose civil liberties are violated, whose are not, okay? That power is rented power. You do not own it. You are not that person. And when you leave, you understand that you are no longer that person. These people are selfish. They are selfish. They're egotistical. They believe that they should be in power for as long as they want when they're making fools of themselves. And honestly, Dianne Feinstein couldn't answer a question uh, uh, that, that was an obvious question as to whether or not she voted on something. Yeah, she can't Joe, even vote. Right. Joe Biden didn't remember he was in Ireland when a seven-year-old remembered it. You know, this is dangerous for the country. But my point that I just want to leave everyone with is every minute that they are in power right now is a reflection of their ego and yeah. their selfishness. Yes. Uh, Jesse, uh, one of the things that Nikki Haley talks about is uh, a cognitive test. Um, and, I, I, you know, obviously it's a problem and we need to figure out how to do something about it. But the whole idea of the government uh, conducting cognitive tests for politicians before they allow them to run for office kind of blows me away because I don't really know who's going to conduct the test, who's going to grade the test. I, I mean, is that the right no, Solution? Charlie, they're going to cheat on the test. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Who's going to make sure they don't cheat? No one's going to make sure they don't cheat. Yeah. Everyone's going to pass. And Nikki is not making any friends in the Senate when she calls it a nursing home. <laughs> I don't know if that was the best line, but people don't age overnight. It's not like all of a sudden Diane got old. Yeah. <laughs> Every six years, everybody in California says, I want Diane. I want Diane. And they've been doing it for decades. Same with Joe Biden. We knew how old he was. We knew how old Bernie was, how old all these people are, but we keep putting them in office. The thing is, is that you don't really vote for the politician. You vote for the people behind the politician. You've seen Fetterman's chief of staff is really the senator. You've seen the person whispering to Dianne Feinstein, just, just vote yes, right. just, just vote yes. Yeah. Biden the same way. Remember, what was her name? Binder came out and said, when I ran for office, basically made a mistake and it made it obvious that she's writing his tweets. And same with Feinstein. All of these chiefs of staff, they're the real power. So it's not that hard to be a politician. 
And that's the real answer here. You got to just say what 51% of the country or the voters want. You have to ask for money. And you have to maybe ask a few questions at a hearing. And half of those questions, the staff is just putting the question yeah. in front of you and you read it. It's really not that hard. So, uh, Richard, I think uh, Judge is right about this. The, I mean, the, it, the arrogance of it is kind of staggering. And it's like, honestly, do you really think that you're the only person who can do this job? That there isn't somebody who's south of 80 that might be able to do the job? But I think Jesse brings up a good point, and it's the right point, right? Think about the case of Minority Leader Mitch McConnell. You, every six years, the people of Kentucky re-elect him, and then they re-elect him again, and they re-elect him again without consideration of his age or anything. And, and so I think that goes to the point. It's ultimately up to the voters of this country, the voters of their district, the voters of their state to make that determination of whether or not they want to elect him. But I do think it's important to realize, if you look at the country, and why I think you see a general sat dissatisfaction for our elected officials, no matter what party you're in, is because if you look, look at the age distribution, Right? There's 21% millennials in this country. There's one millennial senator. There are 20% Gen Zers in this country. There's zero senators and one member of the House of Representatives. The average age of the United States Senate is 64 years old. That's why people are generally dissatisfied. They don't see themselves represented in government, no matter your age, no matter your race, no matter your anything. You don't see yourself represented in government, and that's what people indeed find problematic. Well, the yeah, good news but... for aging folks is that Joe Biden is negotiating prescription drugs to make them lower for them. Well, there's, yeah. look, there's a, a big difference. The, the reason why people are older when they go into politics is because they typically go in after they've had a career and they've had a family and they're not flying back and forth to Washington, D.C. I mean, there are reasons why people are older. And there is something to be said about some kind of experience. I've been in D.C. long enough to know the difference between offices whose staff are just running the show and offices where the senator or the congressman is in full command of what they're doing every day. And most of them allow their staffers to do all of the work. It is undemocratic because people are voting for a representative. They're not voting for their staff. And yet here we are in this position. But when it comes to the playing field for elections and the argument that this happens every six years, every two years for the House, it's not an even playing field when it comes to incumbency. I mean, if you are a senator for 30 years, you have all of the, the infrastructure, you have all of the money. I mean, it's not easy for someone to come in and go up against someone who's been in office. So I'm not sure that's the right argument to make. Finally, I'll just say that for Joe Biden to you know, be saying now he doesn't start things till 10 a.m., I hope nothing bad happens before 10 a.m. <laughs> I mean, honestly, it puts the country in such a vulnerable position so, to have a president for, who can't handle getting through yeah. the day. I mean, what if something really serious Forget happens? the 4 a.m. phone call. The, right. the yeah. 10 a.m., yeah. the exactly. 9 a.m. phone call. I mean, really, We're toast. how is that not a big red flag for the country the, and the, the rest of the world? To me, I think one of the biggest issues is term limits. How do we get term limits passed? They have to vote on it. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's we're in a catch-22 with respect to that, and that's the biggest problem. Yeah. Well, of course, uh, I would argue that we have term limits in the form of elections, but the, but. The real pro but the real problem, if you ask me, is that when you create a government that is this powerful, that takes this much of your money and redistributes it however they want to, no one is ever going to want to give up those seats. Yeah. Those right. are, and, the, and then you have people like Joe Biden who go into, the, uh, into this line of work to make a fortune for themselves. When, when insider trading is legal in Congress, yes. why ever leave? Right. It's true. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.